All right, this is John Cola with OKRaw.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you, and I'm coming at you from the Canada Fruit Festival 2019. They're doing it again in 2020, guys. So if you want to check it out, post a link down below to the video I did about the, uh, the Canada Fruit Fest uh, this year, and also a link to the video I did last year reviewing the event. It's pretty much the same as last year. I always have fun at this event, and one of the reasons to come to different fruit events and places like this is to meet cool people and so many people have different testimonials I meet along my journey and I love to record them for you guys to so like let them know you know what actually changing your diet maybe changing your thoughts and maybe doing some other natural things can help you with and uh, today we actually have Rochelle she's from Alberta here in Canada and uh, actually she healed her uh, health challenge or health opportunity I'd like to say actually mm. um, by changing her diet, changing her thoughts, and doing a few things. And this is something that, you know, medical doctors say maybe is even incurable. Um, so, Rochelle, I mean, to get right into it, what, what situation, what opportunity did you have in your life to actually become a better person? Um, so, uh, November 2018, uh, I contracted uh, HSV2, uh, which is uh, herpes simplex, uh, too, so genital herpes, um, and uh, I decided I was going to decide to go raw. Um, I heard great things about it, uh, the cleansing properties. Um, I came across Dr. Morris. Uh, he's great in the field of uh, fruitarian, um, frugivore, all of that kind of stuff, and uh, he had a lot of really good advice. Um, he seemed pretty dead set on being able to cure it, so therefore, um, I felt pretty dead set on being able to cure it. Um, I don't really believe that uh, no disease is incurable. Um, it's just a form of dis-ease within our body. Um, and uh, so the mindset was there for me. Um, now all I needed to do was have the discipline and consistency, which is just faith and action, um, and to put it forth. So I went from just a regular omnivore diet um, right to uh, raw vegan, um, right off the hop uh, with a lot of fasting. Um, <laughs> the things that came out of my body during that process and, and not just because of the HSV2 but um, just overall uh, the years of living a horrible unhealthy lifestyle, the, the meat, the dairy, um, the alcohol, the tobacco, um, all of that kind of stuff purged uh, completely out of me um, and I was actually healed of a lot more than just the HSV2 um, from the, the lifestyle of being raw vegan. Um, and of course, just the guidance from uh, Dr. Morrison as well, too. So, Cool. So the uh, first question I have for you is, how did you know that you actually had HSV2? You know, did you get blood tests or did you have symptoms or what happened? Yeah. So um, I came down with some really wild, crazy uh, symptoms. Um, I had actually lost uh, usage of my right leg um, just because HSV2 is uh, it does create nerve damage in a lot of different parts of your body. Um, and I didn't know at first that's what it was. Um, I intuitively uh, kind of had an inclination of what it might be, um, being a Google doctor, <laughs> such <laughs> as I am. Um, uh, I, some of the things I was Googling, I, I really started to get the inclination that that is what I had had. Um, so I had went and got tested prior to um, having um, any actual physical symptoms down below um, and blood results came back uh, positive for HSV2 um, and it was shortly after that that I did start presenting um, with sores down below and then which was just another affirmative for me so wow so like that was like and then you got another test just to confirm that just, actually because you didn't want to believe the first one yeah I, 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 I like really nobody, did. nobody obviously wants to. you know <laughs> I, I felt very shameful about it I was very embarrassed about it um, considering it wasn't my fault it wasn't uh, consensual for me um, so it was it was a painful thing to have to go through um, obviously and I mean when you hear that um, you immediately think it, it's quite similar to you know um, AIDS or HIV right um, you, you have to use protection you are highly contagious um, and so yeah it was a very shameful thing and I felt like my womanhood had been stripped from me um, so I yeah I needed I needed to go a, again for a second test um, thinking maybe a false false positive false negative something like that so all right cool and how soon after you it, this that you had the you know exchange <laughs> <laughs> did you come up with symptoms or did you know something was going on 
what do you mean did I come up with them? Like, like so you had the, I don't know, you had a sexual encounter, yeah, <laughs> whatever yeah, it may yeah, be. Yeah. And then how long did it take before you started getting lesions or you're like, your leg yeah. went numb or you felt something yeah. like, I'm not right, like yeah. something's up. Okay, uh, relatively quick actually, which is um, how I, I think I figured out it was from that partner or that person um, because it is actually something that can lie dormant within you for 25 years and you never show a symptom and you can be a carrier um, and not even know it um, because it goes through a viral shed cycle. Um, and uh, But it was four days after that person, I my lymph nodes uh, in my throat had swollen, my tonsils had actually swollen um, and started uh, developing like... Um, a film on them um, and it, it's they actually told me it was tonsillitis at first and um, so they prescribed me antibiotics for tonsillitis and normally when I've had antibiotics in the past uh, you know for a UTI or something like that um, symptoms within 24 to 48 hours you would start to ease up on them um, these symptoms were not going away at all and I was progressively getting worse um, that is when I started losing uh, actually a lot of nerve in my whole right side um, but mostly in the right leg the lower back um, I became very crippled it was like flu times 10 and these antibiotics weren't working and I went back um, they gave me another round of different antibiotics just told me it was it was still tonsillitis um, and at that point I was like I, I, I don't want to take those I mean it's obviously not working for me and I kind of just went within and I asked myself okay back to basics um, what <laughs> what can I do naturally um, because I do trust a uh, a lot more of the, the natural path and the holistic uh, version of things. Um, so I actually, <laughs> I gnawed on uh, three cloves of raw garlic and um, raw coconut oil and within 15 minutes I started to get feeling back in my leg and started to get usage of my leg again. And from there um, it kind of snowballed um, the idea of okay, let's, let's try this vegan thing. This is something you've been putting off for a really, really long time. Um, so you literally just ate raw garlic and raw coconut oil and immediately your symptoms had subsided versus taking these antibiotics that were, I'm sure, causing more inflammation and more damage to you than anything. Um, and so from there, it was the next day, I cleared out everything I had in my cupboards. I went out, I bought a bunch of fruit, a bunch of vegetables. Um, I went out and got a juicer, um, did whatever I could just uh, in knowledge sitting in the back of my mind basically because um, you hear these things over time you pick it up and you kind of dismiss it because it's not within resonance with you at the time um, but I was able to kind of pull that and then I started again being a Google doctor um, came across Dr. Morris and uh, kind of used that as a guideline uh, for me during my transition into raw um, with a mixture of fasting juice fasting water fasting dry fasting um, and all that kind of stuff so wow so how much like coconut oil and garlic did you take uh, and feel some kind of benefit from um, it was about, it was either two or three, I'm not 100% sure on that, it was about two or three cloves that I just wolfed down and about two to three heaping spoons of coconut oil uh, immediately after the garlic and within 15 minutes, yeah, I started to feel usage of my right leg come back. Wow, so that, I mean that doesn't really surprise me too much because you know there's many different plant foods that are actually antibacterial and antiviral, not necessarily for our benefit, but for the plant's benefit, right? Plants, they don't move, they, can't have, they don't have legs, and they create all these different nutrients or phytonutrients or even toxins uh, to protect themselves against bugs, disease, and predators. Right, and this is like nature's pharmacy, F-A-R-M-A-C-Y, <laughs> is what I like to say. And you know, that's, that's why foods are so important. Every different food has a whole different spectrum of different compounds that can be beneficial. I mean, you could Google foods that are antiviral, right? And you want to definitely maybe dose up on some of those foods because they could definitely help you a lot, you know? And, you know, especially the doctors, I guess, misdiagnosed you with some, some kind of, uh, you know, bacterial disease that you could fight with antibiotics, but antibiotics don't work on viral disease. Actually, I had a viral disease when I was younger. I had spinal meningitis, which the doctors had no treatment for. I was hospitalized. They said I might not make it out alive. Mm -hmm. And I can only say through higher powers, um, you know, I'm here today to share this with you and share mm -hmm. this message with you guys. Mm -hmm. So actually, I, I want to talk about that. I want to talk about higher powers, but I want to talk about when you heard the doctor say and diagnose you with mm -hmm. HSV2, mm -hmm. what did you think immediately in your head? Um, well, since I already kind of had that innate and uh, intuitional feeling of the the HSV2, which is why I went in to go get checked, um, I had been kind of googling, googling it right away, being like, what is the cure? What is the cure? Because right away I told myself, there is a cure. Uh, again, like I said, I, I don't believe in um, diseases being a permanent thing. It's dis-ease. Um, just like I, I do believe that I contracted that um, for reasons and lessons that I needed to learn on my path as well. There was a lot that I needed to learn from that. So I, I do believe that I contracted it um, and manifested it. Actually, it would be a better term. I manifested um, 
that scenario so I could transform that for myself. Um, so initially I, I knew what it was and the first thing I said was um, to the doctor after they told me, yeah, you have it. And I looked him in the eye and said, well, what if I told you I'm going to come back in a couple months um, and I'm going to be cured? And of course he kind of looked at me confused, snidely laughed and said, all right, now here, take your valid tracks or, or whatever it is that they prescribe you uh, for for the herpes and um, well I didn't want to take it and I actually um, I was told that, you know for, to leave this office you do have to take it so I, I did um, involuntarily take the the uh, the first round in dosage after that and then from there I just was like all right you know what I got this I know that I got this um, and I already knew it was going to be by going raw um, that was the initial intuition I also had that was telling me and drawing me and um, I think that was a part of my lesson right is I'd been putting off being vegan and raw for so long and it was something that had been calling to me and I just was like uh, I'll do it next time no I'll do it next time oh you know I don't have time I don't have time this forced me into having to go raw and go vegan which was something I was wanting and I just wasn't giving it to myself and this really just bursted open the floodgate for me to do it and it just threw me into it head first um, going raw you know a lot of people that are on the omnivore you know they might go to vegetarian and then to vegan and then transition to raw but I went from eating <laughs> a lot of meat a lot of dairy you know the day prior to that the weeks prior to that immediately into raw and I have no regrets about it um, it wasn't a painful process it wasn't a hard process um, I felt great right off the bat I didn't have any issues um, with fatigue or sickness or anything it was just so natural to my body it was like it was just home almost in a sense like it was I was putting in my body what I was supposed to be putting in my body all along so I, I didn't have any rejection to it um, or any complications with it uh, to be honest with you the only complications I would have had was from the detoxing um, of everything bad that was in my body and a detoxing process doesn't have to be bad if I don't want to perceive it as being bad um, it was just a cleanse um, so and even then I didn't get a lot of fatigue or anything if anything I gained a lot of knowledge um, which was really good and the things let me tell you that uh, was secreted out of I swear every orifice was just absolutely uh, intriguing to me so a little TMI there wow oh, cool so yeah I think the the belief so important you know you gotta you gotta know in your heart in your mind in every cell of your body that you will mm -hmm. cure this you will get over it mm -hmm. now I do want to say I'm not a medical doctor she's not a medical doctor if you do have some kind of medical symptoms go please see a doctor you know they they need to you know talk to you and tell you what to do but of course you know, in my opinion, you can do and be your own doctor. Now, we are not prescribing, telling you guys what to do. We're just simply sharing her story with you on what she did. And maybe you might want to try it. Maybe it might want to help you. Maybe you might want to do some of these things that I think are just probably a, a good thing to do. You know, I, my life was saved only through higher powers. And I changed my diet so that I would not get sick again. I would not come down with any kind of major illness that would hospitalize me and put me back in the hospital. And then another thing I want to point out is, you know, when you started removing the processed foods, the junk foods, the animal foods, the milk, the dairy, all that kind of stuff that you were eating, right, those foods don't have those antiviral properties. And especially the dairy foods and the meat products could have bacteria and viral in there that could even lower your immune system more. So it's so important to eat plant foods with those phytochemicals and phytonutrients that are in the plant foods. That's what give the plants their color, you know, in some instances. And, you know, they're so powerful. And that's why, you know, my diet to this day is 99%, you know, plant-based, raw, vegan, you know, fresh fruits and vegetables. And I even grow a bunch myself. So for um, those of you guys out there that are watching this for the first time, because you may, maybe have some, some symptoms or going through some stuff um, and may not be familiar with what is raw vegan or what is all this stuff, uh, do you want to explain like how simply you you eat now um, and what you actually uh, do? Uh, oh, good question. Um, well, what do I do now? I don't know. It was just a, it just so naturally happened. I just I, I never never really thought of that. Um, I am uh, mostly fruit based, um, out of I guess plant based, but it is it's mostly fruit. Um, I do do a lot of intermittent fasting now, um, or. <laughs> as uh, I've learned here it's not just fasting it's just the way of life I eat when I'm hungry um, and I eat uh, to the point of um, being full I intuitionally eat uh, in, in a sense but I, I follow um, fruit um, mostly fruit um, I don't do uh, a lot of cooked I do on occasion um, as we we're not perfect and I'm not perfect and I mean I'm very still new on this journey uh, like I said this was only just this past November right November 2018 um, so I'm very new into it uh, as well which is why I'm here at the fruit fest um, to gain some insight and some knowledge on how I can keep this uh, a transition in my life and how it can be healthy for me and how I can do it in a healthy manner and keep up with it and do it in a positive way that um, doesn't 
damage my body image or uh, how I feel about a body image and just uh, a healthy way of going about it. So I'm actually here learning uh, more about that myself um, because I have noticed I have been doing a lot more cooked lately. Still vegan, yes, and still very plant-based, um, but a little bit cooked, right? So that's kind of where I'm at if I'm being honest, yeah. Cool, well, it's always good to be honest. So you know what I'd recommend for you guys if you guys don't know what raw foods are, or, you know, what to do, is I'd recommend watching my channel. I have over 500 episodes actually on this channel interviewing people with different health challenges, health opportunities from cancer to colitis to who knows, endometriosis I have a video on, you know, all these things, you know, our bodies heal itself is what it comes down to is my belief and, and the truth of the matter, you know, even a doctor, you know, can stitch you up if you do get in a car accident, which I think is really good, but a lot of drugs and medication, in my personal opinion, are just, you know, basically band-aids for symptoms. You know, to and they're not really going to heal you because our body heals itself when we give it the proper nutrition and/or sometimes even get out of the way. So that's why you know things like maybe taking a dry fast or a, you know water fast or even a juice fast can be ha quite helpful. You know what I eat on a personal and daily basis is I eat fresh fruits. You know I try to eat high antioxidant fruits. You know I'd always go for cherries instead of bananas. You know I also drink vegetable juices that I make fresh with my juicer. You know, especially a lot of green juices. You could throw some garlic in there, the kale, the cruciferous vegetables, you know, good for anti-cancer properties. Every food, you know, research, you know, antiviral foods and, you know, get more of those guys in you, you know, and try to exclude all the foods that are gonna exacerbate or make your, you know, uh, situation worse. So I know maybe, uh, you know, there's certain uh, amino acids, right, that may cause flare-ups and may Definitely. help things. So how did you, you know, um, uh, avoid certain foods and include more of some other foods that might, uh, you know, help you, your body heal? Uh, definitely. So um, obviously wanting to avoid all anti-inflammatory foods, um, which is, there's not a really a whole lot of raw foods that are uh, inflammatory. Um, so obviously avoiding it, like the glutens and things like that, the sugars, um, and I don't mean natural sugars like from sugar, uh, fruit, but um, processed sugars and things like that. Um, protein and not plant-based protein, but meat or dairy protein will aggravate um, HSV2 or HSV1. So if you're a carrier of both um, and you want to induce symptoms um, during this process just to see if you are healing, if you are working, um, go with like a whey protein or you know milk or something like that um, and just test yourself a little bit. I guarantee you, you will break out immediately. Um, the, the virus does feed on meat proteins and dairy proteins, so animal byproduct proteins. Um, very much so, it, it thrives on that, and you will you will have a flare up. So those are obviously things you're going to want to avoid: is processed sugar and processed foods, um, and, and um, I guess animal products, which is, is pretty simple. Right? So. Cool. Did you ever experiment with like a red algae? Like there's like red mm -hmm. algae that's mm -hmm. actually antiviral, mm -hmm. another amazing antiviral mm -hmm. food in my opinion. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't with the red algae, uh, but spirulina. Um, oh, what was another one? Spirulina. Chlorella. Court. Yeah, thank you. Uh, that and a lot of actually um, oregano oil, um, and it, it had to be a very high concentrate of 90%. Anything less than that, you're wasting your time. That also is a very um, natural antiviral, antibacterial. Um, so it was applications physically uh, to my spine, um, which is where the HSV2 virus uh, lies dormant um, when you aren't presenting symptoms, and it's where it comes and hides in your body. Um, a lot of cilantro, a lot of cilantro because what it's actually doing is it's removing the heavy metals from your cells um, where the virus actually hides behind your cell walls. So by removing the heavy metals, um, your body is actually being able to detect where the virus is. So the reason your, your body can't defend against the virus uh, is because the virus does hide behind these cell walls which are also blocked by heavy metal poisons and toxins and pollutants. So I did do a lot of juicing with cilantro and eating a lot of fresh cilantro to kind of break down that heavy metal as well as I eliminated things like regular deodorants and certain shampoos and you know perfumey things. Uh, I went straight to the essential oils if I was looking for any kind of scent um, within my home, within my body um, just to avoid putting any extra heavy metals while I was trying to detox out the heavy metals. Spirulina was really great for that as well too with the detect, uh, detoxing the heavy metals out. And once I was able to do that, my body was able to put up more antibodies for me. Now, it, your body obviously isn't gonna be able to attack and kill uh, the virus, because you can't kill the virus. Um, and I did a lot of lymphatic work because it does sit in your lymphatic system. So clearing your lymphatic system out with certain exercises, certain foods, things like that, and you actually you get to flush it out. So you're not killing um, the parasitic virus, but you are detoxing it out of your body. So. 
Um, yeah, there was a lot of uh, topical application to the lower back as well because the, the virus does like to lie dormant in the spine. Um, I would make uh, something mixed with coconut oil as well too, uh, topical just to have down below and then of course straight consumption um, underneath the tongue for faster absorption into the bloodstream um, and uh, regular, <laughs> regular of that uh, and make sure you have a chase because it tastes awful. <laughs> Forewarning, so. Wow, so um, you know, you did. It sounds like you did a bunch of things, not just like one thing. Yeah. And so I think detoxing heavy metals is probably a good thing for everybody because you know there's things in our lives and in our bodies that actually hinder uh, ourselves from healing. And in my opinion, heavy metals are one of them. Oh, so, sure. besides juicing cilantro, did you take any other kind of herbs or supplements to help get those heavy metals out or flush those out? Uh, no, I, I pretty much stuck with the basics. Um, Financially, I, I, I couldn't, so I was doing what I could financially. Um, I have heard uh, from a few other people of quite a few other uh, different herbs that uh, do help uh, a lot more, um, but I, I couldn't couldn't tell you too much. I'd also just heard of a company called Synergy, um, which um, has a, a herbal whole plethora for you to, to kind of go through different steps, and they um, are also saying that they have a cure for it as well too. Um, so it might be something to check out. Something um, I newly just found out, but it's synergy apparently. So cool. So let's talk about the oregano oil. You know, oregano and many herbs uh, on the planet are quite antiviral mm -hmm. and antibacterial. Mm -hmm. So I've heard of people taking it like under their tongue with water, and some of that stuff will really burn because it's like mm -hmm. super strong. Mm -hmm. But tell us more about how you applied it to your back to get it up to absorb and, and how you felt afterwards and you know what happened. Mm -hmm. So you always want to use a carrier oil, um, so coconut oil, avocado oil, olive oil uh, if need be, but you need a carrier oil um, because it is a very acidic um, and not uh, and taking you out of alkaline in your body either, but it's just it's it's very potent and it does it does burn the skin um, quite bad unless you have the carrier. So after application, um, topically on the lower back, uh, any nerve pain I was having um, because it, it is in your nervous system, there was a lot of severe lower back issues which were causing hip issues, which were causing knee issues, which were causing ankle issues. And um, so I, I do found, or I did find that there was a lot of relief um, in the nervous system um, topically, I'd say about after 20 minutes of, of it soaking into the spine and into the skin. Um, and then of course taking it orally uh, and digesting it that way, you're gonna want a carrier. Um, so I pre-mixed it uh, with a carrier to put underneath uh, the tongue, but it, it's still gotta be the 90%, even though you're diluting uh, with the carrier, it, it's not diluting the fact that it is a 90% um, as well, so. Cool, and how much would you go through, or how much did you use? Oh, oh geez, I will. Again, how often? I was using it as often, uh, intuitionally. My body would tell me. Um, that was the thing, when I first started off, I was probably doing it anywhere between four to six times a day because I was just, uh, I was obsessed with it, right? I, I did, again, I was shameful about it. I just wanted to, to cure it, I wanted to fix it. Um, but after a while, my body kind of told me, oh, no, that's enough. Um, some days it would be two times, some days it would be three times, sometimes it would be one time, sometimes it would be four times. And I think that's the, the battle you're having, uh, fighting the virus as well too. Um, you need to give your body a break in between. Your body will kind of tell you what you need to do as long as you're willing to listen to it. Um, so one day it might need more help, which means that it's gonna, Require you that craving for more oregano, or you're gonna have a thought in your head that's like, oh, I think I think I should have some. You're not gonna know where the thought comes from, but I, th I think I should just take some. That's your body trying to tell you that you need you need to take it. Or if I didn't think about it all day and I felt generally fine that day, then I wouldn't take it, right? Because my body didn't need it, and I didn't need to overload, you know, my my, my organs uh, essentially, right? Which you can do uh, even with things that are healthy. There is such a thing as too much, right? Um, you you really need everything in <laughs> balance. In, in balance, yeah. <laughs> Cool, awesome. So aside from the oregano oil and rubbing it on and taking it internally, did you take any kind of herbal herb, herbs or supplements like in high concentrated forms aside from changing your diet and eating healthy? No, I didn't. No, oh, wow. I didn't. But there, there, there is, um, there's a lot of different herbs uh, that I found out after the fact um, because like I said, I'm wanting to write the book about it. Uh, oh, cool. Um, oh, you're going to write a book. I do want to awesome. write a book about it. Yeah. yeah to help um, others. That's so great. Definitely. Um, so there are definitely a lot more herbs, um, but for me, I found that that worked. Um, and everybody's going to be different, right? Um, I, I know somebody's struggling with that as well too, and my process wasn't enough for them, and they're having to implement more herbs, um, and it's a more of a vigorous thing for them, and um, it's it's actually unfortunate to have to see because I wish it could be as easy as it was for me. So it's again, this is not a guarantee, but it is something that you can try if you feel hopeless. Um, don't lose hope. 
never lose hope um, because again everything's curable your body will take care of you as long as you're willing to listen to it as long as you're willing to feed it the nutrition that it needs to heal and as long as you're willing to give it breaks and rest when it needs it um, I had to take a lot of time off work which I couldn't afford to do but my health is more important than my job and I, I had people willing to, to help me to the best of their abilities you know whether it be shelter or food or you know whatever it may be um, in those times because I had to take quite a few days off a, a work weeks actually um, because there was days I, I couldn't even walk I couldn't move because I, I had no feeling in my in my leg for my nervous system being so shot um, and then of course you know when you're fasting and you're dry fasting or any, any of that and you got things coming out of you you don't want to be at work while you're doing that plus I was so tired I was so tired I couldn't function um, but my body needed that it needed that rest time and I needed to honor that um, for it to heal because you you you're an amazing creature an amazing being and a system and it, you will heal that that's the thing it's not if or maybe you will provided you believe that you will, that you know that you will, and you give your body the chance to show you that it will, um, but you have to be willing to go through any lengths to do that and to honor yourself and honor your body, so. Wow, such amazing and powerful words. <laughs> like I'm almost tearing up here. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, so many things I definitely agree with. I mean, even after, but besides changing your diet, I mean, get back to basics. We all need sleep. Our bodies heal mm -hmm. when we're sleeping. If you're like working every day and you sleep four hours and you're doing all this stuff, it's not working. Well, mm -hmm. you're out of balance, man. Get enough sleep. Like mm -hmm. my goal is I go to bed when I'm tired and I wake up whenever my body wakes up. You know, I, I've created my own job and stuff so I don't have to like have a schedule and be up at six. And you know, if you're setting your alarm clock, you gotta be up at six and you hit it a couple times, you wanna keep sleeping. Hey, mm -hmm. that's your body telling you, you should be still sleeping. Mm -hmm listen to your body unless you know hey money is more important i'm glad you took time off work even if even though you couldn't afford it because you know the most money in the world <laughs> is not worth losing your life or having symptoms or whatever right so health yeah, well. yeah health health is your greatest wealth is what i like to say and i learned that at a young age because i almost lost my life losing complete health you know at, at, when i was young and that that really put me on a trajectory now to like value my health more than anything else you know i don't like to you know, breed people smoking and be around toxic scents because they, they, they're toxic, you know. So, you know, go natural, try to eliminate toxic cleaning products and Tide and different things, products you're using that have scents. These are all, you know, heavy metals, toxins, all these phytates, all these crazy things, you know. So try to live as naturally as you can. I mean, get enough exercise. Let's actually talk about lymphatic because that is so critical, so important. Right, aside from eating properly and our bodies, you know, excreting things from our lymph and, you know, our skin and our bowels and our pee and our sweat, you know, lymphatic is, is so important. It's not often talked about. So, what specifically did you do to, you know, help your lymphatic system detoxify? First off, raw. Uh, raw is especially fruit. Fruit will automatically get your lymphatic system going. Um, Rebounding uh, is yep. probably the number one way to do it. Uh, if you've ever seen the 1980s when they had like those little <laughs> mini trampolines, um, they're super cheap, 30 bucks, or you can go secondhand. You know, I'm sure you can find one for $10 garage sale, something like that. Easy to get your hands on, and it's 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 a beautiful thing. Um, you feel results actually right away. Um, <laughs> I won't get too too graphic with it, but you you um, you cleanse pretty quick um, after your first 15 minutes. And uh, essentially, how it's uh, working, from my understanding, is it's literally it's moving your skin as you're going up and down and you're jumping it's it's shuffling your skin and it's just kind of shaking it it's almost like it's rubbing and it's just breaking everything up so that it can come out of you um, because your lymphatic system is essentially your sewage system so everything in there gets all backed up and it's gross and it's stuff you don't want stagnant within your body right so regular uh, clearing of your lymphatic system should be done because I mean would you want to be constantly using a dirty toilet that has people's Everything in it piling up piling up. No, that's the same thing kind of with uh, your lymphatic system. Uh, another one is dry brushing uh, Same thing. It's a it's a brush essentially um, I don't even know how you would describe it. You can I'm sure you can Google yeah, dry I mean, brush. yeah Dry brushing you just brush your skin and it yeah. kind of just helps move things and keep it going yeah. again yeah. It's just it's it's that surface layer of skin um, and it gets it going and moving it the same way um, as uh, the rebound So those two things aside from the diet were really my only focus in the rebounder Let me tell you it'll work wonders also walking um, walking is a huge one and if you just can't your your body naturally as you walk your arms will sway 
as you're walking, right? So as long as you're not walking like this or walking with your hands in your pocket, your arms automatically move. And as it's doing that, it is moving your lymphatic system for you. You know, walking a minimum 20 minutes a day is already getting your lymphatic system going for you. And that's that's a natural thing that we do. We, we do it all the time, right? So walk more, uh, walk a lot more. That'll really help your lymphatic system uh, clear. It's, it's our natural way of doing that without needing the rebounder or the dry brush or even the herbal supplements, just walk. So how, how easy is that? <laughs> so how much rebounding did you do? Like how many hour, how many, how much time per day? Again, listen to your body. Your body will tell you because there were some days I was so tired. Uh, I, I couldn't lift my head. I couldn't lift my arm. Um, so obviously on the days I was feeling a little bit more energetic, I would break it up in, you know, 15 to 20 minute increments, maybe do that three, four times a day. Again, really depended on the day and what my body could handle that day and what it was telling me I could handle that day. So... Cool, yeah, I mean, I'm all for rebounding and go to Craigslist or OfferUp or Kijiki or whatever those sites are called and people buy those and they never use them or they're just $30 at a cheap health, you know, health food or sporting goods store. You don't have to get the name brand, you know, whatever, because it's like hundreds of dollars. They're all about the same. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, you don't even need one. You could just jump up and down, although I would recommend getting one because it definitely cushions the impact. And if you cannot move, what I do recommend is I recommend something called the Chi Machine. So, you know, they make these, they, you probably find one on eBay, I don't know if they, they do sell them new still. Basically, you just sit down, you lie down, it just takes your legs and swings your legs back and forth. It kind of moves your body a little bit. So even if you're not able to jump up and down, that'll help get your lymph moving. Now, jumping up and down on a rebounder, definitely better. But this is, be if you can't move and you're still, if you're, if you're just laying better, down, yeah. it's better than doing nothing, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's what I'd recommend. So yeah, thank you for that. Lymphatic mm -hmm. drainage is so important, so mm -hmm. critical to our body's proper function. Let's talk about staying hydrated. Mm. Did you drink a lot of water, drink a lot of juices? How did you, how do you stay hydrated? Definitely, uh, definitely a lot of water, um, but there's also a thing as overhydrating um, or over alkalizing, uh, alkalizing your body as well too. So again, just really listen to your body. It'll, it'll, it'll tell you everything you need uh, to know, but uh, I, at least four liters of water a day, just based on the amount that I was sweating, um, the detox that was happening. Um, I didn't want my body to dehydrate because it was happening all so fast. I mean, and I was also getting a lot of, um, water from the fruits, right? If they're high, 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 high in water. So um, I didn't need to um, have too, too much water uh, some days, depending on if I was eating more juicier fruits um, or how many uh, juices I was drinking um, that I was juicing. So um, again, it's, it varied from day to day, so. Cool, yeah, I mean, I just wanna say, like when we get our hands dirty, what do you do? We don't use hand sanitizer. I mean, I don't think that stuff's good for us. We wash our hands because the water cleanses us out. So we need to get water on the inside. Mm -hmm. And as our body is going through this healing process, it helps pull things out of us, which in my opinion is super critical for extra credit. You can look into hydrogen water, which is a high antioxidant water. But we're not going to get into that. <laughs> I did do uh, a lot of salt baths. Um, uh, Epsom salt. Epsom salt, Himalayan salt, uh, sea salt. Um, not only was it uh, a lot easier to deal with the lesions down below because that was probably the most painful uh, portion of it, um, but just all around cleansing for the body, even on the outside. You know, you absorb elect electrolytes uh, as it's just even soaking um, in that salt. Your skin will absorb electrolytes, which will help with the dehydration that you might be uh, experiencing, as well as just overall cleansing of the body uh, and just renewal right so I did almost almost every day uh, the first probably month um, because I did have a, a large breakout for actually three three and a half months it was very aggressive because I was fighting it so hard it was fighting back so it did last uh, quite some time so it was a lot of salt baths Wow so yeah. um, did you do anything else because I mean it's just like oh I changed my diet but now we like learning you did all these little small yeah. things and it all comes together it's not just one thing not changing your diet it's doing lymphatic, making sure you drink enough water, getting enough sleep, you know, all these things come together so that our body is in a more optimal state. I mean, changing your beliefs, all these things are super critical to the healing process and they all need to come in line or you may not get the results that you're seeking. Jeez, I don't know if there's anything else. I completely forgot about that uh, until we were kind of talking about it. Um, but yeah, it's 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 trial and error, and everybody's body is going to be different. Um, do your research. Um, experiment with your body. Don't be afraid to experiment with your body. I mean, don't go to the extremist side. Um, obviously, I, I'm a big fan of doing that because you can't just take what somebody else is saying um, and apply it to you. You can as a guideline, um, as somewhere to go, but you really just have to learn to get in tune with your body and listen. And I know that for a lot of people, it's a really strange concept concept um, but when you get like a, a random thought that says like oh I, I should do this and then you ignore it you're ignoring what your body's telling you so don't if your body's tired sleep if your if your body for some reason um, I had a, a, a week one time where the word fasting kept coming up in my head and I was just like 
like why like why does this keep coming up then i would have like my roommate be like hey you're kind of like into this health stuff like what do you think about fasting i'm like fasting again it's coming up then all of a sudden fasting was coming up on my social media feed i'm like well, what the heck I'm like okay i get it i will fast so it was a universal sign um that kind of had to smack me after you know the week of me not listening to the hey i should fast hey i should fast hey i should fast and i ignored it and i started getting um signs outside of me um to really uh reiterate that for me and so I did I fasted I don't know why I needed to fast but I did and I felt good so <laughs> well amazing I mean the work the universe works in definitely weird ways and I would encourage you guys also to be self thinkers right mm -hmm. you know do your own research I mean Google is your best friend I mean there's a lot of things on Google that may be good and a lot of things that may be bad once again this is just her experience mm -hmm. some of these things may work for you they may not work for you but you know do your own research and don't be afraid to experiment on yourself you know with natural therapies and, and try diff different weird things because one or the other might stick might work and some other ones might not and you know you're never gonna know unless you try these different things and that's why I'm so such a big advocate of natural medicine you know they're in many most cases in many cases they're harmful and in, and they have a high probability of uh, helping you out so they're um, you harmless know. you mean they're harmless yeah. yes, the, na yes, the natural yes, ones yes, are yes. harmless <laughs> um, which is why I usually advocate that as well too right you're not Chances are you're not going to hurt yourself um, by trying a lot of natural stuff because it's natural. I mean, we well, natural things can be quite harmful. There's like you know raw oh, leaves definitely. and things that are quite oh, definitely. toxic. But, but within so within natural, reason. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Like you can go to a natural path store. Um, a lot of places sell things that you can use uh, for that. Um, as long as you're not going on weird extremes of like, you know starving yourself and putting weird things into your body, but it, tweak it, play with it a little bit. You know, just like you treat it like you would a diet. Um, or a diet like of elimination, right? So you're not sure what's causing you these symptoms. So you slowly start pulling things out of your diet. We'll start putting healthy things into your diet and you know see how that works for you as well too. So cool. So you were diagnosed what like November you said? Yeah. Of 2018. Mm -hmm. It's now yeah. August of 2019. Mm -hmm. And how did when did you know that when did your symptoms disappear and you got a you got it retested to, mm -hmm. to see that it was actually negative? Okay, yeah. So and what um, did the doctors say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um after about three and a half months of severe breakout, um, everything finally went away, um, and that's when I tried to invoke um, by eating the proteins, like uh, the animal proteins and things so you like tested. that. I yeah, did test, yeah, experimental with my body. That's good. Um, so I tried to invoke, uh, and nothing was happening. Um, I tried to stress myself out. I don't recommend that, um, but I, I tried to stress myself out. I tried uh, sugars, um, all of that, and I just I wasn't having. Um, any breakouts um, and then I did end up having a breakout and it was quite interesting because I had actually had gotten it on the lip and not down below which I'd never had before um, so to me I kind of signified um, keep fasting keep raw keep doing it a little bit more then I tried to invoke again and I had nothing no symptoms anywhere on my body um, and that's when I decided to go in and test and I came back negative and uh, their answer was, you know, false positive, false negatives. Um, I asked for if we could do another one, and this was my third one, and they basically told me I was kind of wasting their time. Um, and that, um, all right, you don't have it, so it was possibly an error uh, in our, uh, an error that we had had before, so, and it was more so just, get out of here now, right? So I, I don't know what that was about. I don't know if it was something they didn't want to face, if it was something that was um, too controversial for them. Um, I, couldn't, I couldn't even tell you, but I, I was kind of, shoot out of the office afterwards so wow so i mean that it kind of seems to me that like your symptoms went away you've been trying to make the symptoms come back yeah. mother well i'm yeah. not gonna swear <laughs> yeah. but come back it's like yeah. when the cops behind you you're like just pull me over now get it over with i don't care and then he doesn't pull you over. like all right frick. Yeah. anyways so yeah so that's really cool that you yeah. did that to like test yourself i mean that's that's going above and beyond in my opinion it wasn't just like so now you're you're freaking pretty damn confident that like it's just gone forever like you, you're, you're healed Definitely. and I think even more important is that you know you're on you're on a better path in life you know now you're in a situation where you went through this and now look we're making this video and how many thousands of people are you gonna help yeah. by watching this they're gonna watch this video and maybe try some of these things some of you guys that might work for some of you guys that might not but you know what you know there is always hope and mm -hmm. I think faith is super important super mm -hmm. critical so have faith know in your heart know through every cell of your body because that's where it all starts mm -hmm. changing making your best diet the best supplements getting all this rebounding if you don't believe in every cell of your body that you will get rid of this it's just not gonna happen mm -hmm. all right so yeah. <laughs> so do you have any final 
uh, comments or thoughts for Shell to share um, with everybody today that's uh, sat through this whole basically video? Basically just what he said, don't give up, don't lose hope. I and mean, there was times I wanted to, there was times that I really disliked myself. There were times where it was really hard and it was actually, it was quite depressing. Um, that's a hard thing to go through. Um, it really, really is, uh, as any any struggle in life is. Um, but for me, this is, it was, it was a tough one. And um, that was the thing, I just, I didn't want to lose hope. I, I truly believed with everything in me that I could cure it. And I just knew that it was, it was tough and that I just had to really move forward and just keep at it and keep at it. And like like I said, you know, discipline and consistency is just faith and action. I had faith in this. I just needed to have the discipline and the consistency because it is discipline when you, you know, you go 20 some odd years um, eating an omnivore diet and a junk diet. I mean, it, it, it was really discipline that I needed to uh, to go on to the, the raw and, and stick with it. And But I had a, a very high reason to be doing so. But uh, just having faith and just knowing that anything is honestly possible. doesn't matter what it is. Um, any disease can be cured um, or is curable or fixable. You can heal. Um, you can heal. Good words. You can heal. Um, just believe that you can heal. Um, and you will. That's simple. So just don't lose hope. Cool. So, I mean, uh, uh, the plant-based, fruit and vegetable dominated diet, fruitarian, raw vegan, whatever you want to call it, you know, aside from helping her heal um, this uh, opportunity in her life, um, what other uh, benefits have you seen actually? Because, you know, mm. the thing is like, you know, you were drawn to, to this and now you, basically you came out better on the other side in so many ways because now you're going to live a longer life, a healthier life, more d disease, you know, bacterial and viral resistant in my opinion and based on what I've seen. You know, uh, you'll be cancer preventative because you're eating foods that are actively going through your body preventing cancer instead of, you know, attracting it. Yeah. Um, what, what benefits have you seen personally? Oh, yeah, okay. Aside um, from the So, the I have. had what they call like hereditary hair loss, male pattern, female pattern uh, balding. My hair immediately started growing back. It's still in the process, but it's, um, it's sprouting new hair all the time, which is amazing. Um, cellulite I don't have to work as hard at the gym although I still do for my own purposes for strength and just connectivity to myself and just wanting to take care of my body it's the only one that I get um, but I didn't have to work as hard at the gym I, I found I, I was still very strong very lean uh, without really having to try and that was just thanks to the, the, the diet the food the lifestyle the mindset um, what else and just overall happiness a, a lot more happier so much more clear um, to be honest with you after I did that um, I started my own business. Um, I started coming up with new creative ideas. I started to explore myself and found out all these amazing things about myself and what a creative being I am because I had so much more mental clarity. There was no more fog from being so acidic all the time. Um, the headaches went away. Um, my eyes brightened up. You know, a lot of people started asking me, you know, like, what's different about you? Like, you look great. And, <laughs> Well, the raw diet and being happy. That was another one I always joked about. You know, I'm on this really awesome new diet. You should try it sometime. It's called being happy. Um, but it contributes the happiness to uh, the plant-based diet um, for sure. It, um, it brought just clarity and happiness and abundance into my life and um, better people, um, a better mindset for myself that's now going to carry me um, into the future um, and just provide me a more fruitful and healthier future and longevity, right? So. Wow, amazing. I mean, you are what you eat and... You know, people have really bad, messed up brain chemistries because what they're eating, in my opinion, and changing your diet, like you've heard from Rochelle today, has helped her so immensely, not only healing a, a situation, but getting rid of other, you know, that other challenges that afflict standard Americans and Canadians and people around the world, actually, on processed food, junk food, animal food-based diets. So, you know, get back to eating fresh fruits and vegetables. You know, in my opinion, that's what I found that healed me, and that's why I've been doing this now for 24 years. That's why I'm making this video, taking the time out of my, you know, social time to, you know, interview her so that you guys could be helped. You know, there's many resources online. I want to encourage you guys to do uh, searches. You know, definitely subscribe to this YouTube channel. Watch my other videos. I have over 500 episodes actually on this channel talking about eating fruits and vegetables and the benefits uh, you could derive and how to do it even affordably. Um, you know, I teach you guys how to get food wholesale, you know, and save money and all kinds of cool stuff. So click that subscribe button right down below. And the last thing I have for you, Rochelle, is, mm -hmm. you know, um, you talked about writing a book. Mm -hmm. So, you know, can people contact you if they have questions about what you specifically did or how can somebody, you know, maybe learn about your book or because I know you're going to do education in, in, the, in the future. Mm -hmm. um, and thank you for being in this video because I know you weren't necessarily ready to do this today. Um, you know, because I know you, you're, you're really there to help people. And that's mm -hmm. one of the, that's why I make these videos because I was healed. By, the, by you know, making dietary changes, making thought changes, you know, and all these things, and, and now you're going to be, you know, warrior for good.
thank you. Yes, no, and thank you. No, thank you. I honor you in that. So thank you very much. And for what you do, right, to, to get awareness out there because it's so important, so important. You're doing major work, so thank you. I honor that. Um, yep. If you want to check me out and send me a message on Instagram, it's at uh, Source Activation. Um, okay, that's the best way. That's yeah, easy. that's probably the best way for me, uh, most definitely. And I'll I just, put a link down below. Yeah, and I would just like to honestly say, you are loved and you are deserving of love always. So never forget that on this journey. You deserve love and you are always loved. And I just really needed to let you know that. Whether it be from anybody that you have here or even us. I don't even have to know you to love you. So just know that I, from my heart space to yours, you are loved and you are deserving of love. So just don't give up. Oh man, I'm tearing up. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't happen too much. No. All right, so... <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, if you guys enjoyed this episode, hey, please be sure to give a thumbs up. Then I'll try to run into Rochelle more often and make more videos with her. And I'm really going to follow her on Instagram and follow her stuff in the future. You know, just connecting with her heart here, talking with her, and making a video with you guys. Like, she's like totally for reals. Anyways, like it if you like it. Be sure to share this with people, you know, that might have this situation, different forums and all these things that they could kind of learn about her experience and how she got through it and which may work and help other people which I'm all about. Also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on my new and upcoming episodes that are coming out every five to seven days. You never know where I'll show up or what you'll be learning on my YouTube channel. Make sure you click the little uh, bell so you get notified as my videos come out. And finally, be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge over five episodes at this time on this YouTube channel dedicated to teach you guys how to eat more fresh fruits and vegetables due to com economically, why you should do it, how it can maybe potentially help you, you know, uh, get through and overcome many different uh, diseases in the body. So uh, with that, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're always the best.